Hello and welcome to another episode of Closing Deals in Heels. I am your host, Kayla Hodges, and today we have a very, very special guest, ladies. So you know those women that are working their asses off, you know, putting in possibly hundreds of hours a week and sometimes don't get recognized for it? Yes. If you thought of a nurse, then this is definitely highlighting some really, really incredible women that have servants' hearts in this world. Charlene not only has spent over 30 years in the healthcare industry as a registered nurse, also helping women that have been through sexual assault, has done so many beautiful things in there, and I'll totally let her elaborate but she noticed something she noticed that a lot of these women that are nurses are not really being seen for how much they put into becoming nurses they have so many attributes of themselves they have so much skill and yet they don't know how to fully utilize it to get paid what they're worth so she started her own business three years ago helping these women really find a way to use these skills in business and to make a lot of money she started working with us i believe about a month or so ago has really transformed her business has transformed the lives of these other people and i just want to bring her up She's a badass. Charlene. Hi, Queen. How are you doing today? Thank you for being on the show. Hi, Kayla. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure. I um, was just talking to you a few minutes ago, uh, Charlene, and I just get all excited because of how much you... Um, put in, you know, I feel like you have put in a lot of hours and a lot of work, not only with yourself, um, getting the skills and becoming who you are today, but also in, you know, building your business and helping other people. Can you give us just a snapshot of a little bit of your career and, you know, how you got to this moment so we can understand a little bit more? Yeah, it'd be my pleasure. And uh, again, thanks for having me today. Um, so yeah, I've been in healthcare for over 30 years. I know I don't look that old, but you know, it's been that long. Unfortunately, I started really young. I actually started my career as a emergency medical technician at a local volunteer ambulance service in a very small town in Ellington, Connecticut. And I did that at 15 years old. So I was doing, wait, wait, you did what at 15? Yeah, I was emergency. I was riding in ambulances, uh, saving lives at 15 as crazy as that. I don't know who thought that was a good idea. It's definitely not. (laughs) So that's kind of where my, yeah, that's where my journey began. And I did that, uh, through high school. And then after high school, I went to college for nursing and throughout my college, I also served, I worked at a hospital in a ICU as a nursing assistant. So I've really, I I really started my career in emergency medicine and and I've always been a type A kind of go hard or go home kind of gal. I always loved the challenge. So the very early parts of my career were, um, I was really deeply embedded in emergency care. So I graduated from the University of Connecticut, go Huskies. And that was in 97 and started my career, jumped into uh, emergency room nursing where after about three years, I promptly burned out um, (laughs) because it's such a stressful, crazy world. And um, can you go into that really fast? Just because a lot of people don't understand. I volunteered at a hospital and I I promptly got fired from my voluntary position because I broke HEPA or something like that uh, or whatever it's called. Um, Uh, But uh, uh, I remember in college doing that because I wanted to be a doctor and I was in the emergency room. There's some crazy things that are happening in that emergency room. Um, And then sometimes it's super dead, super boring. But I remember just like nurses and doctors being in like the breakout room, just like on their like 18th cup of coffee, trying to just make it through the night. Can you give us like a little snapshot or do you remember like a moment or a time of you leading to being burnt out? Absolutely. Um, Like I said, you know, I was always kind of this person. I I guess you'd say I had a little bit of that adrenaline junkie in me. I love the challenge and the ER is the place to be. And Um, I worked now, this is, you got to remember, this is in the late nineties. And so healthcare back then, you know, it was a little bit wilder. I worked in the South. I worked in North Carolina at a very large hospital, um, in Fayetteville, North Carolina. There's a big, um, army base down there. And I mean, we'd get everything from, you know, we'd have everything from kids to shootings to all kinds of, it was a trauma center. Um, but it was just crazy. Our staffing levels were ridiculous. I think for me, the tipping point where I burned out, well, two, two things. One was I was working as a triage nurse and just, you know, the people come in and you assess them. And I got attacked by 
um, the wife of a patient who was mad because she assisted her husband was having a heart attack, which he was not. He had just been discharged for having anxiety and I made him go wait and uh, she attacked me. And so that was step one. And then step two is just having like, I had three people on ventilators waiting for beds and then three people, you know, we call them walking wounded, waiting for beds. And it's too much for any one person to take. And, you know, you're always worried about, you don't want to, you know, our goal is we want to make sure we're not going to hurt anybody. And just, it was yeah. un, un, unsafe. It was scary and it burned me out. Yeah. So that's where I decided to take a turn. Um, I actually was, I, my career has a interesting path just because uh, a lot of opportunities have ha found me throughout my career. I wasn't looking for them. Mm. Uh, so I was recruited by a, a guy who was in all things, a long-term care nursing director, which I swore back then I would never work in long-term care and never say never in life because I've done all the things yeah. I said I'd never do. And um, yeah, but he he mentored me. And then that's when I entered the world of healthcare administration, leadership. And from there, my, my career really went that path and direction for many years. Um, mm -hmm. And that's where my passion for business, um, leadership, all things, really just trying to change the system from a different perspective and, um, and helping improve systems and processes and, and make, make the work conditions better for the nurses that worked under me. Okay, pause. Okay, so you get this opportunity to go into um, the long-term care, and then in that opportunity, you got a, a possibility to go up, and then you were sort of fixing things that you were seeing. Yeah, correct. Okay, okay. Yeah. Again, kind of the Wild West back then, you know, I, I was in my late 20s. I really had no right. <laughs> I got The guy hired me and trained me basically to replace him. So within a year, mm -hmm. I was the director of nursing at a position. Um, I was very mm -hmm. young, didn't have a lot of, you know, experience in the area. So I've had a lot of learning by doing a lot of things, doing it wrong. And, you know, I say you know, it's not failing. It's it's uh, learning from your mistakes. So I had a lot of hard lessons throughout my life. And then um, at one point, I knew that this was how I wanted my career to go. So I went back and I got a master's degree in healthcare administration, just to make sure my you know, skills and education level was up to par so I could really make some impact. Mm. Um, but throughout that, I, you know, I, around that time, I started having my children and I wanted to stay home with them. So I did a, a couple other, I stepped back from management for a few years. And um, you had mentioned I've done sexual assault nursing, and that was a passion of mine. I did that for several years and was a certified forensic sexual assault nurse examiner. Like I said, a lot of opportunities in my career have found me. I had someone who found me for that. And then, yeah. um, after I had my kids, I ended up going back into the workforce and I've run nursing um, home care agencies, other long-term facilities. And then right around, I'm trying to remember, I think in the 2000s when Obamacare came out, they had initiatives around um, improving healthcare through these accountable care organizations. So I was had an opportunity to work for a very large, well-known organization in one of the top of the nation in creating a population health department, which was kind of unique at the time. So I, I have a lot of experience. And through that experience, it's really, it's been good. And it's been bad. I've seen the good. I've seen the bad. I've seen the ugly. And then when COVID hit, everything just changed. Mm -hmm. Some for the good, some not so much for the good. I, 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 I say that because the good is that, you know, I think in some ways we were forced to come into the 21st century technology wise and, you know, doing things via Zoom and telehealth and things like that. But the bad is it's been rough financially for organizations. And so in 2020, what really pushed me to finally go for it and start my own business uh, was I didn't like what I was seeing. And my job was unceremoniously cut. Um, and it was, I had no hard feelings. It was a business decision. Um, but the fact of the matter is, you know, you, we, we all are kind of at the mercy of the, the finances and reimbursement rates of, in healthcare. So I just wanted to see a change. And I yeah. knew that this was kind of my chance to do that and help other nurses who were also, you know, this is at the beginning of COVID nurses were heroes, right? So everyone's a hero, but with, it was not too so soon after that when, mandates went in around, you know, getting COVID shots and things that the tide changed. And there was a lot of, a lot of stuff going on and, and nurses were not being treated so well, overworked, underpaid, staffing ratios were terrible, things like that. So more and more nurses are just burned out and not feeling like they're using 
you know, not doing what they went to school for. It's not what we, you'll hear it over and over again. Not what we signed up for, not what we signed up for. Mm. And I said, yeah. So like I said, we have so many, so much experience and skill and things to give the world and we can do it in a different way. And so I'm helping nurses do that. I'm helping nurses take that experience and expertise and the passion they have for helping people and creating their own businesses to create that impact. Mm. And in addition to the impact, uh, you know, that work-life balance they seek um, and the financial you know, income they want to make as well, um, being appreciated and just all the things, the freedom, the flexibility and satisfaction, you know, joy, bringing some joy back into their life. No, absolutely. And uh, there's so much to unpack here, you know, and I definitely want to tap on the fact that you're a mom in a moment. Um, But first I'm like, uh, I just want to honor you, Charlene, for your willingness to keep going like holy crap like there's been so much and it it seems to me like no matter what obstacle no matter what happened next it's like all right well what's next what's next what's next like that's been my experience of you and and now it's like you're trying to make a difference because of what you see and there's so many people that see things that should change and then they don't make that difference or they're like I don't know how or I don't want to get uncomfortable to do so right? So the fact that you're willing to get uncomfortable, not just for yourself, but for other people, right, is why we need leaders like you in this world. So I just want to honor you for that. And um, I I would love for us to understand possibly, you know, what it looks like, like, let's say, or maybe you can give us an example of one of your past clients that, you know, was a nurse. And like, how did you sit with them and figure out like where they can go business wise and what did they end up going into, you know, just so we can understand kind of what that would even look like. Yeah, that's a great question. You know, really when it starts, people will often say to me, nurses are very, uh, they think the only thing they can do is clinical. Uh, they have to do something by, you know, physically hands-on taking care of patients. And the first thing I tell them is that's so untrue. There's, Oh, I, I can think of hundreds of ways nurses can use their backgrounds and skills and experience and passion and even things that are not necessarily directly related to nursing to become um, business owners and work for themselves. So the first thing I usually do with someone is sit down and have a discussion about like, so what is your experience? Tell me about a little bit about their professional experience. Um, What are some of the things that they are very passionate? I use that word a lot. What are you passionate? What do you want to do? Because business is hard enough. If you're not doing something you love, Um, it's going to be an uphill battle. Um, And I say, you know, what can you solve? What problems can you solve for people? And we dig deep into that. And then I also, I often will ask people, what do, what will your friends and family come to you for? Like, what are the things they see you like, you know, they always come to you for, I think nurses in general, everybody sees us as the something, somebody has got an eye infection and they call you up and they got their zoom video on. Can you take a look at this and tell me what's going on here? You know, every word, (laughs) but I think our personal experiences often also can drive what we're going to do. You know, I started off with my business. I was doing mental health coaching and burnout coaching with nurses. And uh, Mm -hmm. I ended up evolving my business because while I loved doing that and I was very good at it over and over again, nurses would say, well, how did you start your own business? And then I would go down that path with them instead. And that's truly where my joy is. I, I, I love helping people with that. And my heart is mentorship and coaching. So, you know, taking those skills and leveraging those skills that nurses have we we're very good at educating at Mm -hmm. you know coaching mentoring caring you know um coming alongside and being with people to help them you know meeting people where they're at in life so so what has like can you give an example of what maybe somebody in your past like past client has created you know so that we know like what was it also coaching or i think you mentioned earlier to me about stuff about marketing and stuff like what exactly did they do yeah um, let's start with i have one nurse right now who is she's been in she was working for another company actually and i don't want to disclose what company she was working for but they ended up cutting out a program and she is a holistic leader she has a large background in helping um leaders uh, develop as well as culture building. And mm-hmm. she also has like certifications and aromatherapy and certifying and education and that. So she's created a whole business around that. I'm very excited for her because she was smart. She took all of her leads. And when I say leads, the old business owner was happy to say, Hey, you know, we're not doing this anymore. Go ahead. And I said, you need to leverage all that. So she took it all and she did the work. She like got busy and started reaching mm-hmm. out and Within seven weeks, she already had a ten thousand dollar client wow. sign a contract with her, and so she's. Most nurses are very, very good at nursing. They know how to be nurses, but they don't have that business know how to wow. um, 
take those steps to turn it into something profitable or they just need the plan from A to Z, how to set it up. And then as you mentioned, marketing and sales is its own beast in itself. And it's a whole different skill set. And that's why I'm with you. Then nurses know how to teach. Uh, we love to educate, but we sometimes are not so great at the marketing and sales skills, which requires this marketing more of a copywriter's, you know, perspective and, and sales, yeah. even something more. So, okay, cool. So let, let's go into this, this woman. So you're saying that she had this, you know, um, program that she was facilitating the company cut it they gave her an opportunity to take the lead so was she doing like b2b deals where she was like calling companies and coming in and creating culture for them or what exactly was she kind of doing you know um to yeah. to build that like just because now my brain's turning i'm like well, what did she do I'm like she's aromatherapy and leadership i'm like what does she what does she do what does she create well i guess i she's i really would call her business a coaching and consulting business because mm -hmm. on, in one hand she is coaching and teaching um other leaders nursing leaders it doesn't have to be nursing mm -hmm. leaders. it can be healthcare in general so she'll go in and teach those leaders how um her methodology of leadership through a holistic mm -hmm. uh, servants approach um, but she also, as a consultant, can, yes. And so I would say she is more B2B. So, well, she's kind of both. I'll tell you why, B2B. But um, she also can be hired by healthcare organizations to go in and do an assessment of the culture. Culture is very big right now. We're in a rough time where, you know, morale sucks. And so like going in and helping um, assess what's going on and then uh, coaching and teaching leaders how to better improve those cultures and um, improve recruitment and retention and all the things that are going to make, you know, people want to work somewhere and keep staying working there. I say mm -hmm. she does B2C too, because she is going to be doing some individualized coaching along um, with individual people that want to hire her in that capacity to improve their leadership abilities or get certified in her um, aromatherapy um, certification. See, this is really, really good. And this is really interesting because like right now, um, I like I was acquired by seventh level, which is a huge corporation. You know, we have over 140 something employees, like just growing, 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 growing. I'm not wanting to slow down anytime soon, you know, and I didn't realize, Charlene, that sometimes um, what I understand in terms of morale, culture, um, building, leadership, like all that stuff, like I know it in terms of like smaller business, but not in terms of like large corporation. And it's very different. The way you lead in a corporation, the way you communicate in a corporation is completely different than in a small business. And sometimes that's really interesting, just highlighting for people that are already in it of what knowledge they have. Like right now, I'm about to um, do Harvard Business um, online um, to go through all of their courses and stuff just to learn how to um interact in a corporation and I do have to take leadership courses in there for corporation stuff and I didn't know that, that was an actual thing I'm like oh there's I'm like oh leadership courses it's cool I'm like but it's an actual thing because it's the way you communicate and I had no idea that I was communicating ineffectively um I was you know hey this is wrong this is wrong this is wrong versus like hey this is what I see this is the outcome of what this communication is going to be like here's what the action points are and it's all very very strategic. And I had no idea that that's what it's supposed to be. So I think it's really beautiful that you're shining a light on somebody's natural talents that they got because of experience, because of being in there, that people have to pay courses and stuff and go back to school to learn how to do. So uh, I think that that's absolutely beautiful that you are creating this because women need to know that they can provide for themselves and feel safe. Right. Especially if they've been working so hard and they've done all the things that they were supposed to do. And now they feel tired, burnt out, uh, frustrated. Um, let's talk about being a mom. Right. Because I'm sure that some of these nurses are also moms. And what do you see with yourself included? Like what you don't get to do sometimes as a mom that could make you feel like, you know, not like not inadequate as mom, but maybe like that mom guilt. Um, possibly not being able to spend the time that you're wanting to or feeling so tired that you can't? Like, what were the things that were coming up for you and the things that you're seeing in other women that are working really, really hard to make, you know, ends meet or to make that next bonus or whatever? I love you brought it up and here's why. I, and I know you're a mom. And being a mom and uh, the world expects us to do everything. And quite frankly, 
I, and I don't particularly um, ascribe to the mantra that you can have it all. I do think that women can have it all. I don't necessarily think we can have it all at the same time and stay sane doing it. I mm-hmm. think, you know, I know when I was a- <laughs> Hold on, we have to repeat that. <laughs> we have to repeat that. <laughs> don't think that we can do it all and stay sane at the same time. That That's the key right there. Okay, keep going. That's so good. Thank you. I, I think it's an unrealistic expectation. And I think the- are we are we our own worst enemies? I know I was my own worst enemy, and my kids are older now. My my oldest is going to be twenty one, and and I have a daughter who's nineteen. Uh, so my oldest is a son. My middle one's a daughter, nineteen, and my youngest is sixteen. So he's still in high school. But you know, when I was just a first time mom, and I was also I'm a very ambitious woman, and so very driven. So I always had a career mindset. But when I had my children, my husband and I did decide that I wanted to stay home. So I primarily stayed home as a stay at home mom. I still worked as a nurse per diem, like just picked up shifts here and there to keep my nursing license up. And I did the same nursing and stuff. But like, like you talked about mom guilt. I just don't think you can ever win. When I was with my kids, I wanted to be at work because I was, I'm, Mm -hmm. and I was bored. I wanted to be challenged. I didn't, I felt like all that education I had gotten all, like I wasn't being used that way. Something, my identity, something was missing. But then when I was at work and my husband would be calling me because my baby's crying because she's breastfed, breastfed and didn't want to take a bottle, then the horrible mom guilt, like I just never felt satisfied or like I could do it. Now, fast forward, you know, 20 years, um, I've definitely evolved and I really do want to um, advocate for women and just say there is no right or wrong. If you want to stay home with your kids, stay home with your kids. If you want to work, work. If you want to do, you know, a combination of both, but don't let anyone judge you. Um, And Mm -hmm. more importantly, stop judging yourself. You know, we're all just doing the best we can. And I I, I can only say like, I don't like the judgmentalness of women um, and comparing (laughs) it just something. I, maybe I'm going a little off topic here, but it just, it's a, let's let's go there. We brought it up. Let's, let's hit it. Let's go there. I love this. This It's good. (laughs) Yeah. I just want to see women start straightening each other's crowns more. And um, you know, Hmm. when I see that mom in the store, who's like, she doesn't look like she has showered for a week and her baby is screaming bloody murder and the toddler is running through the, you know, the clothing aisle ripping things off. I look at her and I'm like, it's okay. I am with you. I hear you. I've been there rather than being judged by the little old lady who hasn't had kids in 50 years. Cause this happened to me, <laughs> you know? Um, yeah. I just want women to feel like it's okay. We're, you're, it's okay. The expectations are re- unrealistic. And then we put so much guilt and shame and ex- like these perfectionist expectations. And then as a business, someone helping women with businesses, it's interesting how even you know, some of these women have already raised their kids, but it's, it sticks with them. They, they never feel like they're enough for if I, they can't do this for themselves. I see that a lot. Um, like they don't feel worthy, like, you know, oh, I couldn't possibly, you know, well, yeah, you can. And, and so it's one of my goals is to like, let women know, you know, yeah, that you are worth it and you can do this. And they don't see their own expertise. I talk to women who have 30 plus years experience and PhDs and like an alphabet soup of letters after their name and experiences, and they still don't think they're good enough. <laughs> and I'm like, what more do you need? We're, we kind of have been brainwashed as nurses to think we need more education and more letters to do things. And I'm, t- I, I call bullshit on that personally. I'm like, you don't need it. You are enough. So part of it is while I am a business coach, I really do lean into for a lot of these women, it's just, they need to know that they are enough just the way they are. And someone giving them that permission and saying, yeah, you can do this, go for it. This is good. And and I want to touch on something here because this happened to me the other day. I feel like because so many women do judge right and do have issues with other women it's just because they haven't healed from that and like that's one thing for me like I really want to break break um generational um like curses and trauma of like women being mean to women and comparing ourselves to women you know and it's like even like in like tribal community days where like women had to compete against each other to like get the best alpha man you know it's just uh, there's just so much dynamic there and and I know Every woman that I've ever spoke to has had some experience in their life where there was another woman that was being mean to them for no reason. And I think that we all really get to heal from that and grow together. I was in a grocery store the other day and I had a, a woman 
uh, that was pushing her kid around in a buggy, right? And um, her kid was, like, acting up, you know? And it was, like, the cutest, like, the cutest little boy, uh, maybe, like, one and a half, two years old. And, uh, Charlene, I want another baby so bad. Like, I, I would do anything for, like, a little baby that I could just kiss and hug. Like, oh my God, like, just let me hold your baby, you know? And uh, <laughs> and I'm looking at this baby, and in my mind, I'm not envious, but in my mind, when I see something that I want, um, I heard somebody told me once, they were like, don't be like, oh, I wish I could have that. But it's almost like like life and like God is showing you, look what's possible for you, right? And so that's like my new turn. Instead of being like, man, I want a baby. Instead, I'm like, oh my God, look what's possible for me. Like one day I'm gonna have a cute little boy, right? Like, like I'm just like speaking it out. But it was so interesting because the baby's acting up and she looks at me, she's like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. Cause she felt like she was bothering me, right? Like, and I could tell in her eyes cause I read body language and I'm like, like she's really ashamed right now of her cute little baby that I would die for, you know, like <laughs> that is making a mess cause he's like one and a half or two, you know? And I'm just like, oh my God, like, it's okay. Like, I'm like, hi, I'm like, hi, you're so cute, you know? But I just, I just thought that was really interesting that you noticed that as well, because with just like the opposite fact of like somebody judging me, like, oh my God, I can't believe it. And my, in my mind, I'm almost the opposite. Like, oh my God, like, oh my God, you're so lucky. You're a little baby. And we, we take this and we try to put ourselves in this mold of what we should be. The perfect mom. My kid is always behaved. I am dressed to the nine and everything is good. And you know what? Like, uh, and I'm making money and my husband and I are the best relationship ever, like, or whatever the situation is, you know? And like, we just try to put ourselves into this mold and expectations of what we think we have to be. Oh, and I'm going to work. I'm going to come home and I'm going to cook dinner. And like, some point like part of my French but like we have to stop giving so many fucks about what we think we should be and focus on being present because those memories are going to be gone they're so gone so fast like I wish I wish I wish and I can't go back in time and spend you know the moments that I did have with my kid like on the time that I was home and I'm very much like you Charlene I'm super ambitious I felt so bad I'm like I I I just want to work I just want to get things done like I can't I'm not I don't make crafts okay guys like (laughs) you're like me I I am not that mom either (laughs) not that person um and it really messed with my head because my mom was my mom made our clothes my mom stayed at home like bless my mom's heart I have no idea how she raised five kids like um as a stay-at-home mom and like literally did every, ba- made fresh bread like she baked bread guys like she baked bread and um I had this level of what I thought I should be as a mom and I wasn't that because it was so different but the uh, actuality is like I can't go back and make those moments rehappen again so like can we be present when we're at work, we're like, hey, we're going for our goals. We're going for what we want. And we're like striving to become better every single day. And when we have time with our kids, even if it's 30 minutes at bedtime and they're just begging for you to read them a story, I promise you in a few years, they won't do that anymore. You know, so it's just like, can you make the most out of the moment? Because they go so fast. Speaking from a mom whose kids are, you know, like I said, my my baby's 16 years old and it was, it goes by in a flash. And I, I do think I tried really hard to always be in the moment. And it's funny the story my my kid you know he loved being I'd lay with him he was he was a mama's boy for so long and I'd lay with him every night sing him songs and then the day came when it just stopped and it kind of happens naturally and then it was just maybe a few weeks ago I was thinking about that and I got teary-eyed because it's like it does it goes by in a moment and so enjoy those times I'm very happy to say I'm going to be a, I'm going to be a Nana. My, my daughter's pregnant. So I'm going to, in, in November, I'm going to get to experience it all over again in a different way. But I will say, you know, I have the wisdom now to look back and say, it is okay to like go hard or go home and, and do things. Like you said, I like what you said about when you're at work, you know, be at work, give hundred percent. But then when you're home and it's something as a business person, I have to continuously remind myself because, you know, when you're a small business, you're wearing many hats and, in charge of all the things. And you're so afraid of dropping the ball. Um, but you know, I've had to be reminded by my family every now and then, and that's okay. You need an accountability person to say, Hey, Shar, you know, yeah. you're really not being with us. And, um, you know, can you put the computer away and come spend time with us? And it is important. Mm-hmm. You don't want them to, you know, no, as a nurse speaking from seeing a lot of people die, nobody on their deathbed has ever said they wanted to work more. <laughs> Never. It's always <laughs> like, just always remember that. Yeah. That's really, wow. 
Yeah, that hit that hits home, guys. <laughs> Dear Lord, you know, I feel like what was I going to say? Uh, that sometimes it doesn't have to be so black and white, too. It doesn't have to be black yeah. and white. It doesn't have to be oh work, oh home, oh turn it off. Because as a business owner yeah. myself, you know, I'm like, how can I create a both and for myself? You know, yeah. and um, like. I don't cook dinner every night. I don't ever cook dinner, actually. Like, I tried to start cooking dinner, and then my daughter and I ate the food, and she told me it tasted really bad, and then we ordered Uber Eats. That was my experience of cooking dinner, and then now I, like, get all the meal prep meals, so it's just done, and then, like, once in a while, we'll go out to eat, but it's just, like, all my fridge, it's done. I don't have the time. Like, I, I just don't. I cook myself breakfast every day, but that's about it, but what I try to do because I do work at night sometimes because I have stuff I have to get done. Like there's, there's non-negotiables that has to get done, but can I include my kid in it? Okay. So like I'll do like a business strategy and I'll sit with her on the couch and I'll put up a whiteboard. I'm like, well, what do you think? Kids are so creative. They'll come up with something. Right. And now she feels like she's included in building something really cool. And she's learning things that maybe that she didn't know before. Like I've made her take sales calls before. You know, I try to get her in dance every night, every night that girl's in dance or cheerleading so I can work while she's like doing that thing. Um, but you know, so in her mind, she thinks like, hey, I'm just at dance and me, I'm just like pounding away on the computer. We get home, we eat. I kind of sit there with her and then she's like, you know, so, but there's both ands, right? There's both ands. So yeah. to any woman that's listening right now, Charlene, like what, both and can they create, especially if they're working a job, to also start their own business? Because you're helping nurses do that, right? Like, hey, so in their mind, sometimes maybe they might feel a little overwhelmed by the fact that, hey, I'm going to have to take on all the stuff, create my own business and work. And what what do you give in terms of advice on, on what they can do so they can start and not freak themselves out and then back out? That's a great question. And that's pretty much exactly what I do with people. Like you said, uh, starting a business. Yeah, there's a lot of steps to it. But the main thing is focusing on one thing at a time, number one, and then the things that are going to move the needle. There's in the business world nowadays, there's just so many shiny objects out there. Everybody's got, um, you know, a get rich quick scheme, which I do not believe in. Mm -hmm. And when I bring people in, I'm like, I'm going to give you, and we're going to build a solid foundation. And we're going to teach you how to build an actual business. That's going to be around for years to come. I'm not selling anybody. Uh, you're going to make, you know, six and seven figures in 30 days. It's such BS and it's, it's unrealistic yeah. and it sets people up to fail. So, um, I would say personally, like, yeah, most people come in and they, I tell people, don't quit, don't quit your day job. You don't need to. Can you commit one to two hours a day, maybe 10 hours a week? And if I give you exactly the steps and can, and what it mostly is, is a lot of women, they get it stuck in this analysis paralysis. It's like, they got to read, they mm -hmm. got to research, they got to do all the things before they mm -hmm. implement. And I'm like, stop it. It's like, <laughs> just start doing it. So I break it into baby steps. And I'm like, you know, I want you to do these three things this week, we're going to get on the phone. And we're, and like, if you just keep staying in action, focused on the right things, stop being a, and I, I have ADHD. So I get the whole squirrel thing. Like I, I am like over here, my husband is my accountant. He's like, sure, cut it out. And he's like, he brings me back to center. Um, because we're all susceptible to it, but truly it's a matter of it's stop talking about it, stop dreaming, start doing. So, yeah. So I want to keep everyone focused and it's really, you know, I try to tell them let's work on three priorities, three things like, and what are going to, what are those three things that are going to move the needle? Let's not focus on, you know, things that don't matter. I think people often procrastinate and they don't, if it's something they don't want to do, they'll work on all the the 10 other steps that really aren't going to move that needle. Um, I think a great one, if, for example, is uh, sales calls. Like it, mm -hmm. even though it's one of the most important things and it's exactly what's going to bring money into your business. Um, if it, they're not, if you're not good at something or scared or uncomfortable, mm -hmm. like making cold calls, or making even warm calls, yeah. it terrifies people uh, to reach out. Exactly. And so if you don't have that, you know, right skills for that, and then you know, holding their, I tell them number where I'm there, I'm there to hold them accountable, but I am also there to help teach and support them along the way too. And, uh, you know, cause if you have the right skills, you can learn how to do things and not be so scared to do them. And then, and I mm -hmm. tell people, I don't care if you're scared, do it anyway, do it anyway, do it over and over and it. over until you're not scared anyway. <laughs> yeah. Which is what you did. You know, I, I know that you just became our client, right? Like about a month ago, what has been your experience? Cause I've seen you like work your ass off and get crazy results this past month. And I'm just super proud of you just for like, 
um, diving in full, like to both feet, full in, dive in. Like, what do I got to do? Okay. What do I got to do now? Okay. Now what else do I got to do? Okay. And, um, the biggest results I see are from people that take action like that and are willing to get messy and willing to like go all in. So can you just give us like your experience and what kind of happened, um, with you and, um, and just like the fear that possibly you may have felt as well, because, you know, we are on the other side coaching people through fear, but we go through it too. And sometimes we don't show it. I think that's great. Yeah. So, you know, when I joined, I, I knew my bottleneck uh, as it, it was the sales process. I had a process. I've been, you know, I've worked with another coach. I just never felt aligned and really just didn't feel good. And I was looking for something else. And I, I listened to um, Jeremy's podcast and you happen to be the guest. And I wanted a woman coach. I have been searching for, and it is, I cannot tell you how difficult it is to find women in sales. So I was, I mean, and I don't mean women, I mean women who teach sales. So um, I found you and I was so excited. And yeah, I am a go hard or go home kind of gal. And what I've learned through, like I said, in what's I, what I teach, like you said, get into action, even though it feels scary. Like, don't think for a second, I don't get scared. <laughs> you know, it's, there is a little fear of failure, especially when you're someone who tends to be pretty successful. Um, I, nobody wants to fail, but the thing I've learned in life is like fall down, pick yourself up, dust yourself off and do it again and again until you get the result you're looking for. Um, so yeah, so when I joined, you know, I immediately, I set myself a schedule. I try to like do so much of the studying um, and then I, I immediately jumped on calls and um, I sat there and just kind of listened to the first few, but then I was like, well, let's just do this. Cause one of my fears is I do not, and <laughs> I do not like to, to record myself, even being on this podcast mm. for me is uncomfortable. I don't like to play myself back and hear my voice. I don't like to see myself on video. I'm not the type of person who needs to be the center of attention that way. And so that's my fear. And so being in those groups, um, I think Laura, the coach, Laura is the one who was like, yep. I used to have that fear too. And she's like, just force yourself to raise your hand and, and volunteer and role play. So I'm trying to do that and mm -hmm. jump up and role play, even though it's uncomfortable, like, cause the more you do it, then you start to like, the fear starts to dissipate. You start to get, build your confidence. And, um, listen, I'm still, I have been in it a month and I've had incredible success. And I wanted to let you know that I had another sale yesterday, the 31st. So I got five in one month. <laughs> what? Let's freaking go. Okay, so five in one month. What was your biggest month before that? How many sales had you made in one month before? June was three. And so I was like, yeah, it was killer. Um, but you know what oh it is? God. It's just doing it. And like, um, I also like that you're like, it doesn't have to be perfect. Like work on one section at a time. So like I, re I did record the calls to review and like, I'm a little embarrassed because I'm like, I totally, I can look at the things and tell, I can tell you exactly what I even though I made the sale, like there's definitely work to be done, but just, mm -hmm. you know, leaning into the pieces that, um, I, I have improved so much. And, uh, for me, pre-handling objections is probably the biggest thing, asking the right questions, tonality, um, and number one, and I, I got to work on this some more is talk less. Um, I'm a chatter. Mm -hmm. Um, I think my superpower is connecting that rapport, building rapport with people, but at the same time, um, I'm like, my husband will listen to my calls because he used to be in uh, pharmaceutical sales and he'll say, Shar, you know, like you're, you're here having a good time, having a conversation. He's like, you got to get to the sales. <laughs> so I'm like, I know. Yeah. So I still have a lot to learn, but um, the, the um, scripts and um, just all the coaching has been so, so effective for me. I appreciate it. No, that's good. And I, I appreciate your humility. I, you know, I know that. Uh, five sales for you, you know, is at least, you know, 50 grand in revenue for all the women that are listening on here that are like, Hey, what's possible for me? Just want to throw out here. Uh, Charlene's a badass. Um, and you know, one thing that you did mention was like, Oh, I don't need to be the center of attention. And I, I want to give you another perspective <clears throat> if I can, if you're open to it, Charlene, because, um, you don't need anything, <clears throat> right. But you have so much wisdom and you've put it so much time to acquire the skills that you have, to acquire the heart that you have, the character you have, the willingness to help others. Uh, sometimes it gets to be your responsibility, 
right? There is a woman on here on this podcast, right? And I appreciate you for being vulnerable and for putting yourself out there today, even though this doesn't make you feel comfortable. There is some woman on here, and I don't know who she is. Maybe you're listening right now, right? That maybe has had that mom guilt that you're talking about and just needed to hear that. Or maybe she's a nurse as well and she just wants to know a way for her to be able to make money for her family because she works her ass off too. Or maybe she just needed somebody to uh, speak into her today to let her know that she has what it takes and, and you are that example for her. And this is just in one scenario. You're constantly pouring into other people who then go and turn around and pour into other people. So it's a domino effect. Um, and there's nothing wrong <clears throat> with uh, your light lighting other lights. And even though it's uncomfortable, sometimes it gets to be um, a, like a destiny or a responsibility because you wouldn't have all this wisdom and knowledge and assets and understanding and compassion and wisdom like if it wasn't going to be utilized. Thank you. That's really, really good. To, it's funny even you saying that because it's I'm someone who is very much of, I love to build other people up and it's hard even to accept the compliment. It is. Isn't that funny? You know, and, and even though I can teach others and, and say, lean into it, you're great. You're good at what you do. And I mean, I'm. I, I'm confident in what I do. I'm not very good at taking compliments though. So thank you. I appreciate that. It's very nice of you to say. <laughs> receive, receive, receive. For all the ladies that are on here, um, how do we get in uh, connection with you, Charlene? Like what would be the best way? I'm going to post it underneath where this podcast is, but just so it's verbalized here, how can they connect with you? What would be the best way? Where can they find you? Absolutely. You can find me. I have a website. It is... Uh, it's at Char Marie Coaching, C H A R M A R I E Coaching.com. And you, I, I hang out on Facebook. I have a Facebook group. If you are a nurse and you're interested in learning about entrepreneurship and or just want to get to know me, um, I do have a Facebook group called uh, Nurse to Entrepreneurs with an S on the end. And you can just look it up and um, I'd love to have you join. All right. So, Nurse Entrepreneurs, Nurse with the number two and then Entrepreneurs, Nurse two entrepreneurs group. Yes. Perfect. So, and that's also amazing, not only just to be <clears throat> like stepping into an entrepreneur, but being around another community of like-minded nurses would probably be beneficial um, for you as well. Cause I know sometimes it, you can feel a little lost, especially if you're growing, growing, growing and the people around you are not. So you want to be in, in like-minded communities like that. Charlene, it was such a pleasure having you today. Uh, thank you so much. Is there anything else, like one last thing that you want to leave with someone in our audience? Maybe somebody's listening right now that needs to hear one thing from you. Like, what would that be? So I, I, I as you said that, I wanted to say you're good enough, you're smart enough, and gosh darn it, people like you. I hope some of uh, your audience uh, from the old SNL days will get that. And it's meant to be a little bit funny, but it's so true. I just want people to like, just lean into, you know, you have that ability, trust yourself and, and, and take chances in life and go for it. You only have one life to live. And uh, the only regrets we have in life are the things we didn't do. So that's my advice. <laughs> so much wisdom today. Uh, thank you ladies for listening in. Thank you, Charlene, for being here. Um, please make sure that you obviously hit that subscribe button and you send this to all the nurses that you know, um, and we will send you and see you on the next episode. Bye guys.